Hey everyone, Kieran King here. So we have looked at the structure of balance sheets and I think it's time to go through some real life examples to put what we have learned into practice. I took this example here off the corporatefinanceinstitute.com website and Amazon or AMZN, its ticker symbol, is a publicly listed company on the NASDAQ stock exchange. I'm sure you all know exactly what Amazon does, um, but before we begin, I'm going to cut this document up so, like magic, you will see how it resembles our drawing right at the start of the series. Voila! Okay, so we have assets on one, high, one side and liabilities and stockholders or shareholders equity on the other. And this is shown, you know, you can see this is how we uh, represented it before. Um, green for assets, red for liabilities and blue for shareholders equity. And as we know, with a balance sheet, assets must equal liabilities plus shareholders equity, meaning that this number needs to equal this number. I'm putting a link to the full statement of accounts for Amazon um, in the description, so feel free to uh, click that link and follow this through me as we go along. So let's start right from the top. I'm going to go back to uh, the original format this balance sheet was in. So let's start right from the top, right from the beginning. We have the name of the company at the top, and in this case, Amazon. All right, you can see that here. And we know it is a balance sheet. And what else do we know? It, all the data here is in millions, okay? So these numbers on the right here, for each of these numbers, you need to add 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 uh, to each of them, okay? And, and, and why is that? When you become a massive company like Amazon, it makes sense to abbreviate these figures, otherwise they might run off the page. Okay? And it says everything except per share data. So except the data that relates to the par value of shares, which I'm gonna go through a bit later on. We have the various headings. We've got assets first that is shown and then liabilities and shareholders equity uh, at the bottom. Now remember when we spoke about balance sheets right at the beginning of the course we said that a balance sheet is a snapshot of a moment in time and these dates here tell us that at that particular moment in time this is what the numbers look like. What, what I want you to look at here when we're looking at the sheet is I want you to forget about 2016 and I want you to just focus on the 2017 column. So all these numbers in this column, all right? Don't worry about 2016 for now. 2016 is just there so we can make a reference. So now let's go through each heading. The first thing, current assets, cash and cash equivalents. Cash and cash equivalents, um, which as we know are the most liquid of a company's assets, sits at $20,522. Or if you um, added the millions data, it would essentially be $20,522,000, okay, in cash and cash equivalents. Marketable securities, this is at 10464 These are assets like public shares or T-bills that essentially can be sold or converted into cash really quickly. Amazon inventory, $16,047. As we mentioned previously, Inventories can include raw materials, unfinished or finished goods that can be sold. Accounts receivable, net and other. This is $13,164 or $13,164,000,000. And this is essentially what is due to be paid to Amazon from services that they have provided. Okay, they haven't been paid for it yet. All right, but it's essentially outstanding invoices. We then have total current assets, 60,197, which is the sum of that, 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 and that. Okay, so you're breaking it up, all right? We're first looking at the current assets. Moving on, we're going to look at non-current assets. And I know it doesn't actually say non-current here, but essentially it is this section here, all right? And we know that from, from what we looked at in previous videos. So we have property and equipment, $48,866 of property and equipment. Um, goodwill. I will do another video on this, but essentially it is an intangible asset, meaning that it's non-physical, um, that is usually seen on a balance sheet as a result of a merger or a acquisition. And it, it, it represents things in a business that is, is difficult, if, if not impossible, to put an independent value on, such as brand loyalty and reputation. But as I said, we'll do another video. And finally, we have total assets. Okay, so what is total assets? This is the sum of all these assets, so not only that, 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 and that, but also that, 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 and that, okay? And we see the total assets in 2017, which includes current and non-current, is 131,310, um, or 131,310,000,000 uh, dollars. Next, we're gonna move on to liabilities. 
So liabilities, remember, is, is, is stuff that the company essentially owes others, all right? Again, like assets, it is split into current and non-current, although it actually doesn't say non-current here either, okay? So we've got current liabilities first, um, accounts payable. As we, as we know, accounts payable, the opposite of accounts receivable. This comes to 34,616. And think of these like outstanding invoices that Amazon needs to pay others, all right? As I said, it's the opposite of accounts receivable. We then have accrued expenses. Now, what is an accrued expense? These are expenses that are recognized on the books before they are paid, all right? So this might be salary. You know, you know what you're gonna pay someone in a salary each year, um, but it hasn't actually, you haven't actually made that payment yet. Does, does that make sense? We then have unearned revenue, okay? This is money received ahead of supplying a service or a product. Um, so simple example, say you paint someone's house and um, they pay you first, but you have not yet started painting, all right? The money you received up front is technically unearned. You haven't done the job yet. And that's that number there. And then we have total current liabilities, which is 57,883, which, um, which very simply is the sum of that, that, and that. Next up, we have long-term debt, all right? So everything now, um, so this section here is the non-current section of liabilities, all right? Um, they don't mention it, but just um, it's just something that you have to know, I guess. So long-term debt, this is debt that is due in over a year, all right? And we have $24,743. Other long-term liabilities, 20,977. So now that we've gone through liabilities, we wanna know what the sum is of all these liabilities added together. All right, and it doesn't actually say it here on this, on this balance sheet, but we can work it out. All we have to do is plus the current liabilities with the non-current liabilities, and you get 103,601. Dollars, all right, or 103 billion 601 uh, million uh, dollars. That is the total number of liabilities, current and non current. Oh, we also have uh, commitments and contingencies. Sorry, I didn't, I forgot about that one. Uh, note seven when preparing annual financial statements, there will be various notes within um, the full statement of accounts that explain or supply additional information on a particular issue. So here it is saying to look at note seven. Um, which would be attached to this statement um, to know more about commitments and contingencies. So if you're interested in that, obviously the link is in the description to the full statement of accounts. Go check it out and you and, and tell me what note seven is. There's a little task for you. Right. Final section, shareholders equity, or if you are American, stockholders equity. All right, they mean the same thing. So as we know, this is essentially how it has been paid for, you know, the investments into the company and retained earnings. So stockholders equity. So first of all, preferred stock and common stock. What does that mean? Preferred stock and common stock describe different share classes. Different share classes generally carry different rights, but it's not too important here. We then have this thing called par value. So what is par value? This is the face value of the share and it's not its market value. For instance, I might pay nowadays for $1,000 for a share in Amazon. Um, however, its par value remains $0.01, uh, that is. And all it means is the minimum value that the company has assigned to represent that share. Next up, under this heading, we have authorized shares. Authorized shares are just the maximum number of shares that the company is allowed to issue as laid out in their articles of association, which is a corporate document when the company is formed. In this case, it is allowed to issue 500 million shares of preferred uh, stock, and it has 5,000 million shares or 5 billion shares of common stock that it is allowed to issue. Next up, we have issued and outstanding shares. Okay, so what does this mean? Issued shares is shares that are actually issued. And within issued shares, you have treasury shares, which is down here, and you also have outstanding shares. Okay, so treasury shares are shares held directly by the company, and outstanding shares are shares held by essentially its investors or shareholders. Now, that might be a complex topic um, to, to get your head around, uh, if you're new to this, um, but just bear with me and um, and I'm happy to answer questions, further questions on it, or even do further videos on, on this topic, all right? But don't complicate it for now. So the number of issued shares, the number of preferred stock issued and outstanding shares is none, all right? The company does not have any preferred stock, so don't worry about it, all right? Hence, there's no numbers appearing here. 
the number of common shares, however, all right, for 2017, don't look at issue shares for now, look at outstanding shares, okay, because these are essentially the shares that are in issue to shareholders and investors. The number of, of, of common shares outstanding is 484 for 2017, okay, 477 is for 2016, 484 um, is for 2017, and that's 484 million, all right, because you know it's in, it's, it's in millions, the data here. And 484, all right, million multiplied by the par value, which is $0.01, will give you 5 million. Well, some of you might be asking, well, what about in 2016? There was 477 four, uh, million shares outstanding, and it's still 5. Well, this is because um, these are all rounded to the millionth. So if you go back to previous accounting periods when issue shares were say uh, 416 uh, million it will show the, the value as four million dollars okay they're just rounded up or down okay moving on the next line treasury stock okay so as we know this is this is shares that are issued that the company owns not the outside shareholders all right and the number here is in brackets okay so why is this in brackets well first of all know that any number that is in back brackets just means it just simply means negative so why is it negative this is because the treasury is essentially buying back or repurchasing shares from its shareholders thus it is at a cost okay so it's minus it reduces the shareholders equity by the amount paid for the stock remember this is shareholders equity we're talking about and you can actually see details of of this buyback um, program in the statement of accounts that amazon has produced and so go check that out if you're interested with these two additional paid in capital accumulated other um comprehensive loss um I'm not going to go into it in this particular video, but just remember that they represent a value of shareholder equity, uh, which is written uh, here. Okay, one's, one's positive, one's minus. And next we have retained earnings. This is the amount of money left in the business after any profits have been distributed to its investors or shareholders. And we can see this is at 8,636 or, or $8,636 million. Finally, we see the total stockholder share equity, all right? And all this is, is this section added together, all right? So if you go 5 minus 1,837 plus 21,389 minus 484 plus 8,636, you're going to get to 27,709, all right? So that's $27,709 million. And if we take this number, 27,709, and we add it together with this number here, voila, what do you get? You get 131310, which is exactly the same, if you look here, as the total number of assets, all right, because they are balanced. 131310 of liabilities and stockholders' equity equals 131310 of total assets. Okay, boom. All right, well done for sticking to the end. I appreciate the last section on shareholders' equity might be a bit more complicated to understand looking at a real life example however hopefully it should give you a basic understanding of balance sheets and how they work if you have any questions please pop them in the comment box and i'll get around to to answering them um, i plan to do a follow-up on business on balance sheets as well looking at what i personally look look out for when evaluating uh, a business's health so stay safe and stay tuned thank you very much for completing this course honestly really well done and um, hopefully I'll, I'll see you in in videos to come take care everyone bye